A volcano in Ethiopia, silent for nearly 10,000 years, has just erupted with such force that its ash blasted 14 kilometers into the sky, higher than most passenger jets ever fly. Within hours, flight paths across India and the Middle East were thrown into global chaos as a river of invisible ash raced across continents. Scientists are stunned, airlines were grounded, and millions are wondering just how far this crisis could spread. But what started this eruption after so many millennia of silence? The answer begins at the heart of Africa. Just after 11 a.m. local time on November 23, 2025, the ground in Ethiopia's Afar region trembled. Haley Gubi, an ancient shield volcano that had lain silent for at least 10,000 years, ruptured without warning. The first explosion sent a column of ash and gas straight into the sky, rising to nearly 45,000 feet, higher than the cruising altitude of most long-haul jets. Satellite instruments captured the plume's height and density in real time, confirming what ground observers could only describe as a wall of darkness. The Smithsonian's Global Volcanism Program, the world's leading volcano database, cataloged the event as Haley Gooby's first confirmed eruption in the entire Holocene epoch. For volcanologists, it was a once-in-a-lifetime shock. A volcano previously listed as dormant suddenly began rewriting the geologic record. Ash began to drift northeast, carried by high-altitude winds, while the eruption's raw force left scientists scrambling for answers. The eruption's sheer scale, both in height and suddenness, became the new benchmark for volcanic surprises in the region. In a matter of minutes, a forgotten mountain had announced itself to the world. Volcanic ash is far more dangerous than it looks. Each particle is a tiny shard of rock and glass, mixed with sulfur dioxide gas. At 45,000 feet, this invisible threat moved straight into the busiest air corridors linking Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia. As the plume crossed the Red Sea, aviation monitors in Yemen and Oman issued urgent alerts. By the time it reached the Arabian Sea, India's Directorate General of Civil Aviation, known as DGCA, sent a midnight notice to every airline, telling them to avoid the affected altitudes, reroute flights if necessary, and inspect any jet that might have crossed the plume. Air India and Akasa were among the first to cancel international routes, including flights to Jeddah, Kuwait, and Abu Dhabi. Others like Indigo and KLM scrambled to divert planes already in the air. Pilots flying over Western India reported ash detection warnings in their cockpits. Within hours, ash was confirmed over Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Delhi, Haryana, and Punjab, and in parts of Pakistan. The risk was clear. Volcanic ash can sandblast a jet's windshield, clog vital sensors, and most dangerously, melt inside the engine's hottest parts, causing sudden shutdowns. For millions of travelers, a volcano in Ethiopia had just rewritten the rules of global air travel. Every decision now ran through real-time satellite maps, redrawn flight paths, and the relentless advance of a cloud no one could see from the ground. Muhammad Idris felt the first tremor before sunrise. His sheepdogs barked wildly. Within minutes, a dark column rose behind the distant hills. By mid-morning, his village in Afdera was covered in ash so thick that daylight faded to a ghostly twilight. The ground, once dotted with tufts of grass, turned gray and lifeless. Goats and cattle refused to graze, their noses crusted with dust and their eyes watering. Idris's family moved their animals into a makeshift shelter, but the fine ash crept through every gap, coating feed and water with gritty residue. By the end of the first day, the village well tasted of stone and sulfur. Children coughed, their throats raw. The few masks sent by aid workers ran out within hours, forcing families to improvise with scarves and shirts. Livestock, the backbone of a far life, grew weaker each day without clean forage. Reports from local health workers warned of rising respiratory illness, especially among the elderly and the young. Idris listened to the radio for news of relief trucks, but roads blocked by ash kept convoys stranded miles away. The community pooled what little fodder remained, rationing handfuls to keep the animals alive. Each night, families swept ash from rooftops and waited for the wind to shift. For the herders of Afar, survival now hinges on the hope that help will arrive before the land and their way of life slips beyond saving. Twelve foreign tourists, including travelers from Germany, the Netherlands, and the Philippines, were trapped near Dalo as the eruption unfolded. Their guide, Johannes Gebremariam, steered the group away from the ash-choked plains sheltering behind a ridge of black basalt. 
Ash continued to fall through the night, turning water gritty and making each breath a struggle. Using a satellite phone, Johannes reached the Ethiopian Red Cross just after 1 p.m. Emergency dispatch logs confirmed the call, coordinates relayed, conditions worsening, and supplies running low. By the next morning, a Red Cross convoy, joined by a military vehicle, began the slow push north. Ash had blanketed the only road to Aftera, forcing rescuers to clear debris by hand and to navigate around stalled trucks. The rescue team carried masks, bottled water, and basic medical kits. It took nearly 12 hours to reach the stranded group. By the time the tourists were evacuated, several showed signs of mild respiratory distress, but all survived. Relief workers reported the drive back was even slower, as visibility dropped and fresh ash drifted across the track. Aid for local villages faced even tougher odds. Convoys loaded with fodder and water supplies stalled outside Dubti, blocked by ash drifts and broken bridges. The Red Cross logged repeated attempts to reach Aftera and nearby settlements, but progress was measured in kilometers per day. Each radio update brought news of fresh obstacles. The teams pressed on, determined to reach everyone left waiting in the shadow of the volcano. Beneath the Afar desert, the ground is always restless. Scientists tracking the region's movement saw the first hints months before the eruption. Satellite radar known as INSAR revealed the crust stretching and sagging near Erta Ale, a volcano to the north of Haile Gubi. In July, a swarm of small earthquakes rattled the rift, signaling magma forcing its way sideways through the crust. This underground river of molten rock, called a dike, traveled at least 14 to 18 kilometers, draining Erta Al's magma chamber and inflating the ground beneath Haile Gubi. The crust here is thin, just a few kilometers deep, and as the dike pushed in, pressure built rapidly. Professor Tim Wright, a leading rift geodesist, explained that the East African rift is literally pulling Africa apart, sometimes by centimeters each year. When enough magma pooled beneath Haile Gubi, the overlying rock finally gave way. The result was a sudden, explosive release that no one alive had ever witnessed from this volcano. The quiet shield had become a pressure cooker, triggered by the restless forces tearing the continent itself. Mount Pinatubo's eruption in 1991 sent a vast cloud of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere. It cooled the entire planet by nearly half a degree for two years. In 2010, Iceland's Ejafjalla Jökull volcano grounded thousands of flights across Europe. It stranded travelers and cost billions, even though it was much smaller than Pinatubo. Scientists now turn to satellite data, tracking Haley Gooby's sulfur output and modeling how far the ash and gas could travel if the eruption flares up again. Dr. Simon Karn, a leading expert on volcanic gases, notes that the current sulfur emissions are significant, but still far below what Pinatubo released. Most climate models agree. Unless a second, much larger phase erupts, global cooling is unlikely. Professor Clive Oppenheimer of Cambridge points out that only a sustained massive outpouring of sulfur could shift the world's climate. For now, the odds of a planet-changing event remain low. Experts are watching closely, knowing that even rare events can rewrite the rules. Earth's crust is still tearing open beneath our feet, and ancient giants like Haley Gubby can awaken without warning. As global air routes, food supplies, and even climate hang in the balance, one thing is certain. Nature's timetable does not wait for us to be ready.